Hello, my name is Scott Wallace with Smoke and Text. I'm the National Consumer Products Manager, and today we're going to talk salmon. Salmon is a very popular item cooked in our smoker, and I think you're going to like this. We've got everybody from restaurants to fish farms to hunting lodges doing salmon with our smokers, and I think you're going to like what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to try to keep this separate for you, and I'm going to try to keep it straight, but I'm going to talk about two different types of salmon. I personally prefer to just cook my salmon in the smoker. But I know a lot of people like locks, so I'm going to try to talk about both at the same time and, and keep it straight and I hope I won't confuse you. Now this is just a, a, a regular cut of uh, salmon from uh, the, the, the market. You can see this is not a skin on salmon. I've done skin on salmon. Uh, I prefer myself to do skin off salmon. Um, if you do skin on salmon, there are some concessions that you'll need to make because of the fat that gets put by the salmon and how it, how it makes it work. Um, so I start with a big piece like this. Now I've already washed this with cold water and I like to take some paper towels and just pat it down and dry it out. But the first step in preparing it for me is I cut this into about four pieces. Okay, nothing fancy, nothing special here. And I just ended up with something about like that. Set these over here for now. Now, if I'm going to do lox, okay, lox is essentially a preserved salmon. Okay, you're going to chemically cook the salmon before you ever do anything in the smoker. Now, this is lox that I have in here. If I'm going to do lox, what I would do is I would take a quarter cup, and this is equal parts, a quarter cup of uh, curing salt or rock salt or sea salt, a big coarse salt. Uh, a quarter cup of light brown sugar and about a tablespoon of pepper. That's a good ratio. You could of course double that uh, if you're doing a lot. I would, rub, I would rub this entire piece, both sides, very heavily. Okay, I want it really just pasted up on there. I would then take another piece like this one. Okay, Rub it very heavily. Get it pasted up on there and then I put the two together like so. Okay. Make sure I've got good buildup of all of the, 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 the salt, the brown sugar, and the pepper mixed together all very well, rubbed on here. Then I take saran wrap and wrap the entire piece, both pieces, loosely. I don't want it tight. And what that does is that gives me a configuration that looks about like this. And you can see, if you look in here, what I've done is I've taken just like this is a container from uh, the store, and I've taken a, a, a colander insert or a steamer basket and turned it upside down. And then I just take and lay my salmon on top of that, and you can see how the, the salt has whipped the moisture off the salmon. And this salmon's been in here for about three days. And you can't probably tell right now, but already it's turning a very dark, rich color and it's getting very stiff. Okay, all the moisture is wicking out of it. After about four or five days, this would be considered preserved. It would be considered complete. You keep it in the fridge. I like to go in once a day or twice a day and just kind of move it around, get any excess moisture out of the saran wrap. Okay, and you could actually preserve your salmon to a finish point just like this. Uh, after about five days, you would rinse it very, very well under cold water for about an hour, wash all that rub away from it, the brown sugar, the salt, and you could start slicing and have your salmon right there. That'll go back in the refrigerator. Now, today, I'm going to talk about how I like to do salmon, and I've got a couple different ways that I like to do it, okay? I like to do a rub, I've got three rubs that I pretty much stick to. Now I've just finished, or just about finished, spicing all the salmon. Like I said, I'm doing three different combinations here uh, today. This I've used today, toasted sesame seed oil on, uh, a little ginger, a little salt, and just a hint of garlic. That's going to have a great flavor. Uh, this one I've done with the olive oil. This is kind of a, my, my most common. This is probably my girl's favorite, uh, my daughter's. I've just done a little olive oil, a little salt, um, a little onion, and a little garlic. And I want to show you this. I'm going to put it over here and uh, we'll talk about the third piece. But one thing that I do when I'm doing this, if you can see, with salmon, there's always kind of a, a thick edge and a thin edge. When I put mine together, 
I take and roll that thin edge under and then just put it like that. And that helps, helps give me a little more consistent cooking thickness when I put it on the smoker. So you can see these two are ready to go. Now this last one I'm going to do uh, for some uh, smoked salmon soft tacos. So I've mixed together here just a little bit of oil, and I mean just a little bit. In this case, I use this walnut oil here. Taking a little lime juice, I've got some chili powder, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion, a little bit of salt, and a lot of cayenne pepper. This is going to have a kick. Um, and it's awesome. It is absolutely incredible. If you like it spicy, uh, this will definitely wake you up. So I'm just going to rub this around. And this is a little thicker. It's a little more of a paste. Uh, and I'm okay with that. I like to let it build up on there. Now, using the oil, salmon is a real fatty fish anyway. And using the oil will help it preserve some of its moisture. Um, and we can talk about that. I cook a lot of fish in the smoker. I like seafood and I like fish. And really, in terms of fish, there are two different types of cooks. There's a fatty cook, which would be a fish like salmon or even like the steelhead trout or tuna or uh, I, I, I haven't cooked it but I understand mullet or steelhead are both pretty fatty fishes. Um, and those fishes I like to cook at a lower temperature for a longer length of time and we'll talk about that once we get outside. Um, the fresh fish like a sport fish, the leaner fish like crappie or bass um, I like to cook at a higher temperature for a shorter length of time. And I'll go over that with you when we get outside, when we look at the smoker. Basically, those three pieces of salmon are pretty much ready to go. Now, if I were going to do some locks, this guy here, I would be taking and putting uh, a mixture of the, the, the curing salt that we talked about, brown sugar and pepper, and rubbing it all over there and wrapping it up and putting it in the, the box like we talked about earlier. Um, but for now, I've got enough of this, uh, this spicy rub left. We're just going to go with that. So give me a few minutes, I'll get this stuff all rubbed down, we'll take it out to the smoker, and we'll get the loaded and get started to cook. I'm sure you saw us earlier today, we were doing a little cold smoke, and we're back again today. We've got the, we've got the smoker switched over. Uh, I've got my drip pan in place. I've put about, I would say between a quarter and a half a cup of wood, uh, wood chips, and I've used in this case um, the oak that I was using earlier today. Uh, I actually probably prefer on my salmon pecan personally, but pecan can be acquired taste. You can try cherry, uh, don't be afraid. Alder is probably the most understood traditional favorite. Most salmon smoked is smoked with alder. Um, but, but don't be afraid to try other things. Hickory, apple, pecan, any of the woods will really work well. Personally, for my, for my taste and the kind of what, this is what I call a warm smoked salmon. In other words, it's not chemically preserved. We're really just baking it, and we're going to serve it, and it's only going to be good for a couple of days afterwards. It's not like the, the really salty, uh, heavily smoked salmon that you know you would consider as uh, previously cured. So it's a little different approach. My family and I actually prefer this. Salmon's really absorbent, and I don't want it too salty, and I don't want it too smoky. So like I said, I put about a, oh, about a quarter to a half a cup of wood chips in there. I've got my different varieties, and you can see where I folded them under to make them a little more uniform. I've even taken this thin piece and folded it back under and, and so forth. Now, you can do this a couple ways. Uh, most frequently, I cook it on a full boat, just like that. I make a little full boat, put the salmon on there, put the full boat and everything on the rack. If you do it that way, you're going to get a little bit moister fish. It's going to be a lot more moist along the bottom. If you do it this way, directly on the rack, the fat that rises when you're cooking will drip away and you'll get a little drier finish and you'll get this glaze all the way around the fish. Both ways are great. Try them both um, and decide which one works best for you. Now, we talked earlier about cooking salmon and cooking the fattier fishes. And, and salmon is a very heavy fat fish. When I cook a fish like salmon, I like to cook it at about 170, 165, 170. These pieces would take about three hours. Okay, 165, 170, three hours, it's going to be phenomenal. It'll have a nice glaze on the outside, uh, a good kind of crust and, 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 and uh, dryness to the outside, and it'll be moist and tender and just falling apart on the inside. You're going to love it. Um, 
The reason I cook it at a lower temperature like that is because of the fat rise. This way I don't get the curdles of fat coming up on the fish. Now if I'm doing a leaner fish, like bass or crappie, which we discussed earlier, I'll do it at 225. I'll do it at a higher temperature for about 45 minutes. But for salmon, I like to do it at about 165, 170 for this warm smoke, three hours, three and a half hours for pieces that are about an inch thick. Now, if this were lox, <clears throat> and we did some lox earlier, and I'm putting lox in here, remembering that it's chemically cooked already, it's chemically preserved, then what I do with it is I put it directly on the rack after I rinse all the rub off of it, I put it directly on the rack, I put it in here with the wood, I set the unit to about 135, 140, and I'll let it go seven or eight hours because I'm really looking to dry it out. And you'll see the difference in the finish when we go inside. So I'm going to close this baby up, we're going to start smoking, and I'll see you in about three hours and we'll show you how good we're going to eat tonight. Okay, it's smelling some kind of good in this kitchen right now. I can tell you I've got a youngest daughter. That that piece, that'll be hers. She can eat that whole thing by herself. Essentially, we've got a couple different things here going, and I want to just talk to you a little bit about it. Remember that we cook this with the skin off. You're more than welcome to do it with the skin on. You can apply the same techniques. You'll have a nice fatty layer along the bottom of the fish. It's very good. This is the one that we did with just the salt and um, a little onion and a little garlic, and I put a little paprika in it just to keep a little more pink color to it. This was the Mexican version. You know, got a little chili powder, a little cayenne, it's going to have some kick to it, spicy, absolutely incredible. This one is going to be just the toasted sesame seed oil, ginger, and a little garlic. And what we're going to do, I've got some great ways to serve this, and I've got some great relishes, and I'll put some recipes up that, you know, a recipe that goes with this one, a recipe for this one, a recipe for this one, so you can kind of mix and match and do some nice things with the relish, or uh, like this makes great, like I said, soft smoked tacos. Um, and I've got a good black bean and corn relish that we can put on there with the, with the avocado and jalapeno spread. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Another thing to do with this, absolutely super. After you've had your meal, you've got a little leftover, take either a little yogurt or a little mayonnaise and a little cumin, a little coriander, maybe chop a little celery, some pine nuts, make a great smoked salmon salad for sandwiches. My daughters love this stuff. Now this is the lox that we did. I showed you earlier in the container. Now what I did with this, like I said, you can do it four or five days in that container until it's totally chemically cured. I'm not normally that patient. So after about two days, I took some out and rinsed it off really, really well. Washed all of that brown sugar and salt off of it. I then took some sorghum. That's this stuff here, pure cane sugar. Absolutely great stuff. Like molasses, but not quite as tangy as molasses. Took this, rubbed it all over the fish, crusted black pepper over that, okay, and I put it in the smoker at 140 degrees for about eight hours, and this is what came out. Now, this would be very close to lox. Now, the trick here is that I don't have a knife that's single-edged and sharp enough. But this would slice, if you started slicing it, if you've got a super sharp, razor sharp knife, this will slice just like lox. And that's what it is there. And absolutely incredible, incredible flavor. And this will keep quite a while. You put this in a Ziploc bag, you put it in your fridge, you can keep this for quite a while. This you're going to need to eat in a couple days. This has got some legs on it. Um, it'll go for a bit. And this, on an omelet, with a little bit of... Uh, Mushroom shallots and, uh, you know, a nice go to cheese. Absolutely incredible omelet. Just the best you'll ever eat. I like to use this around my house in place of bacon. Um, I can put this in food and I don't have to add any salt to it. Uh, it carries enough salt with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, be sure and stay tuned. Check us out at www.smokingtext.com. Watch our videos. Make some comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. If you've got any suggestions, let us know. And keep an eye out for our newsletter.